Hi, I'm Dr. Kit Weathers, and it's time for the Root Tip of the Week. But let's begin with the Illusion of the Week. On last week's root tip, I pulled a pencil out of my nose, and what I'd like to do is use that same basic concept and show you how we can push a straw through the bottom of our jaw and up into the floor of the mouth. If this is done carefully and the alignment's just right, you can fool people every single time. Now here's how it's done. To learn the secret to this and other magic tricks in this series, go to endorootcamp.com. Okay, here's a couple of tips to improve your access. Now, if our patients could open their mouth this wide, access probably wouldn't be much of a problem, but obviously they can't. And what we've had in the past is a cingulum access, which is very small, little triangle, and in the event that there's more than one canal, as we see here, it's very difficult to get back into that lingual canal. So what we want to do is change the access opening both for the anterior and for the posterior region. This is an example of the traditional cingulum access that we've all done in the past. Now what I'd like to suggest you do is open it up more so that you have an incisal edge almost involved and go straight into the canal and that gives you a chance to prepare the canal easily. Show you an example of this. What we've done in the past is to make our initial access into the cingulum and stop at that point. I'm recommending now that you include the incisal edge as we see here and even go down into the canal just a little bit with the LA access burr or the LA access diamond and then lean toward the lingual which then gives you a perfect preparation as we see in this point. And now this is a much better preparation than the old style of making just a cingulum access. Let's look at molar access preparation. The working cusp on the upper is the lingual cusp and on the lower it's the buccal cusp and the canal opening is almost directly beneath the cusp tip. So if we want to find that easily, our our, uh, access opening must begin almost at the working cusp tip. And the non-working cusp is almost even with the surface of the non-working cusp root, as we see in this illustration here. And because it is so close to the exterior of the tooth, we do not go all the way to the cusp tip on the non-working cusp. So our slot that we're going to begin with Uh, goes from the working cusp to within two millimeters of the non-working cusp. So our molar access prep would go something like this. Step one would be to take our number four round burr, prepare the slot to within two millimeters of the non-working cusp. And this illustration shows that the working cusp is in red. The non-working cusp is yellow, but we're going to stop two millimeters short, and that's what the little green dot is for. Then the next step would be to extend that toward the distal and we're going to go slightly past the buccal groove and this illustration shows us the blue part that's how far we're going to extend the groove just beyond the buccal cusp not all the way to the distal and in that case we're going to get a nice triangular preparation although it won't be a perfect triangle because we use the LA access burr to create those last grooves and it becomes uh, a groove above each one of the canal openings as we see in this illustration right here. On maxillary molars, the preparation is essentially the same. Step one is to use the number four round burr to prepare a slot preparation. Again, starting with the working cusp and to go within two millimeters of the non-working cusp. This is an illustration showing that the non-working cusp is in yellow, but we stop two millimeters short at the green dot to create our initial slot preparation. Then we're going to enlarge that in step two to go just beyond the buccal groove toward the distal. Keeping in mind that the distal buccal canal is usually almost in the center of the tooth and it's rarely under the distal buccal cusp as we might expect it to be. So our preparation is going to look like a triangle just like on the lower. And then we would take the LA access diamond and go back into the preparation to create our straight line access by placing the safe ended tip into each canal and straightening up the file and the preparation will wind up looking something like this. Maxillary premolars, again, basically the same concept. 
We will, however, use a number two round burr in the case of the premolars or the anteriors. And as we did in the molar, we go to the working cusp, and on the maxillary it would be the lingual cusp, and two millimeters short of the non-working cusp, and that creates a little slot like this. No need to go to the distal extensions because the canals are always going to be in a buccal lingual orientation. This just shows reducing the occlusion to give you a better idea of exactly how much of the tooth is involved. And as you can see here, the access opening on premolars is really quite conservative. You don't need to remove a lot of tooth in order to get the proper access opening. One other thing to keep in mind with premolars uh, and, and also on uh, some molars, a lot of times you'll find two canals that has an isthmus of tissue between them. And in these cases, you have to go down with a burr and make sure that you get to solid tooth structure. So if you follow these directions and make your conservative access as we've just shown you, you'll find that you have beautiful access openings in the premolars, nice looking access opening in upper molars as well as lower molars. Give this a try and I think you'll be surprised how conservative you can make your access opening and still get straight line access into the tooth. Well, that's it for another edition of the Root Tip of the Week. I'm Dr. Kit Weathers, and I will see you at the next Endo Root Camp.